how many, by a show of hands, how many of you guys have fallen when you're on a show? Have fallen down? No one? Oh, one, two. Okay. The three right here. My wife would be four, five, and six, actually, if she was here, because she's fallen down a lot of times. Um, this is pretty common among agents to fall down. Uh, we walk around looking at our phones. We look at print off, stuff like that. We're not looking where we're going. Um, something my wife wanted me to point out specifically is um, a lot of basements in older homes. You, you think that you're going to open a door and it's going to be a closet or something and it's a staircase going right down. That's something that she has fallen down and we've had customers fall down those stairs also. Um, nobody's ever gotten seriously hurt, but that's something I think everybody needs to be aware of, the stairs. When you're negotiating stairs, don't be looking down. Look, look where you're going. Um, let's see. Let's go on to the next slide here. Yeah, watching your step is very, very important. Let's do the next slide. There we, there go. we go. Does something feel wrong? <laughs> Some of you guys meet people and something just feels wrong. Your body has a natural instinct to sense when there is something wrong. So don't ignore that. Um, it's one of those things that uh, we've, all been, we've all been in a listing and thought something isn't right. Let me just go ahead and get through this. Well, most of the time, if you feel like something's right, it's not. And you'd probably be better off to leave, maybe come back later with friends, something like that. And don't, don't take chances just for the sake of a sale. Your life is not worth anything that can come from a sale for a prospective buyer or a listing. Trust your instincts whenever you have the ability to, and it should be always. I have a friend who I talked to about his class who's a police officer, and he said the number one job of police officers is to go home at night. That's also the number one job of an agent. You guys have families, you have people who rely on you, and yes, we want to sell real estate, but not at the cost of life and limb. You really want to make sure you're going home at night. It's very important. Don't rush. This is something that I have a tendency to do, and my wife has a tendency to do. Um, if you're rushing, you're going to get scatterbrained. You're going to forget things. You're also probably not going to drive as well. You're not going to do anything quite as well. Multitasking. Everybody thinks we need to multitask nowadays. Now, if you're going to walk and chew gum, that's one thing. That's, that's two very easy things to do. If you are going to do two complex tasks at a time, if, um, if you're Justin, per se, and you're sitting here working on an appraisal, and then you get a real estate call, you're not going to be able to do your appraisal and talk on, your phone, on the phone to your customer about a different property without having trouble. You're going to focus on one thing or the other. So my suggestion when it comes to multitasking is consider doing one thing at a time. Do this, then do this. If you've got easy tasks, it's one thing to do several at the same time. But if you're doing anything that's complex, you need to pay attention to what you're doing. So we we're going to talk about safe showing practices. This is basically the most important thing that we're going to be going over here. Um, Are there any thoughts or questions or input about mindfulness? Anything you guys might want to have or a scenario you've been in? I know I myself, just an example, I was out doing an appraisal on a house and I had knocked on the door, they weren't there. We got the key and we went inside and I started hearing somebody talk to me. I thought I was losing my mind and I, I was completely unaware that they had a small, little small camera system throughout the house. They could hear everything I was saying, every step I took in the house. They could even hear me on the back end of their property because they had a little camera set up to hear this stuff. I had no idea. So being mindful about what you're around and who's around you, you never know what's listening. Advertisements you have on your vehicles. If you get a step of road rage or something crazy going on or something really aggravates you, that's still your name and your reputation on the line. In the safe showing practices, what to know and how to be prepared. Some of the most basic things to think about are listed up here. Just tell someone where you're going. 
always make sure you communicate with somebody so they know where you're going and what you're doing and give them generally an idea time hack to say, hey, I'm going to be out showing this property. If you don't hear from me in 30 minutes, call me. If I don't answer, come find me or send somebody to come find me. Contact someone. At our office, we have a pretty close office and there's usually several people there. When we get ready to leave, they say, hey, Jay, Justin, I'm getting ready to go show 172 Spring Street and I should be back here in an hour. Um, sometimes I'll say, hey, I got to bank after that and I'm going to get lunch after that. Don't freak out if I don't come back. But we always tell people where we're going. But we have a pretty close-knit office. If you don't have that, you have someone. You have a spouse. You have, you know, someone that you... Um, a good friend or something like that. You should always have somebody who kind of knows where you are and when you're going to be back. Absolutely. Meet customers prior to showing if possible. So try your best. I know it's not always perfectly feasible, but if you know you've got a showing coming up or you know you're going to list a house, see about having them either come to your office or meet in a public location ahead of time. Finding yourself in a comfortable situation and being around people you've at least met mitigates half of the potential for being in harm's way. Be informed about your clients. It goes hand in hand with that. There's no reason that you can't look into who these people are, look up information. You can find their Facebook. It's the digital age. Almost anything you need to is out there. There's websites where you can look up reports about people's background to find out if they have a criminal history for assault or anything. Things that you might want to be more diligent and mindful of. If people say, hey, maybe that's not your business for me to give you an email or my phone number. No, that's exactly our business. We, if we're going to go show you a property, we need to know who you are. It's very important. So don't let anybody tell you that it's not your business to know who they are if you're going to show them a property. It is exactly your business. And don't be shy about bringing somebody along with you, whether it's a friend, a spouse, somebody that has the ability they can sit in the vehicle, they don't have to get out and be completely in everything that's going on, but if they can, that's fantastic too. Just have somebody with you that can help if something goes wrong, or at least make a phone call to someone. Show during daylight hours. Avoid showing homes or going out to meet customers anytime it's in the dark. It is a statistical probability that about 60% of attacks have happened after normal business hours. So when the sun is setting down, people tend to feel a little more honest. They tend to lose their minds and they want to do more unnerving things. Just a little uh, side, uh, side uh, piece to that. Um, I showed a property at night not too long ago. It was about 7.15, but it was pitch black. And it really did more harm than good. The people couldn't see the property. Um, they, uh, you know, they needed to come back the next day to see it anyway because they had no idea what the yard looked like. Um, so anyway, it's it's you may as well just do it during the day if at all possible. Yeah, absolutely. Announce your presence as soon as you walk into a home. Make sure you knock on the door, even if they say it's vacant. Just announce your presence, just to make sure you're covering your bases. You never know if there's a squatter or somebody. Realtor, else. yeah, that's what you do. You knock three times and say realtor. You're at absolutely. Home. It tells it tells the good guys that you're not a bad guy breaking into their house, and it tells the bad people that you're not a cop coming in to bust them. So it's really it's good to tell people who you are. I've never had anybody tell me that they were going to shoot me or anything like that one because they they say oh you're you're a real estate agent and the next question is what do you think my place is worth so, yeah. <laughs> yes ma'am i had a house that was listed and the realtor was showing it they walked in there were squatters and she immediately called me can you call the police now we had 911 right there yeah um then the so the people that were selling the house had to um lose what the name of the piece of document was that the police could arrest the squatter immediately without that piece of paper at the police station all they can do is remove the squatter not arrest them but i mean here her, her, she's terrified there's somebody in there and they were squatting and police were there so this was Joplin. they were there in minutes absolutely we've had a few of those unfortunately Leanne and i have um we've we 
hosted a lot of repos over the years, and we've had a few of those. Usually squatters are, are docile and they're, if you tell them you're not, you just want them to leave and you know, you're not the Gestapo coming in to take them out, they're usually all right, but not always because you don't know what kind of drugs they've been doing the night before and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I've had, I've also walked into houses, announced my presence, walked in and I had one a few months ago, the lady was back in her bedroom in bed and didn't say anything when I came in her house or anything, just, just was there in bed and she said, oh, I've been sick. I, oh, okay, well, I should probably leave, so. But uh, yeah, she didn't feel any need to say anything when I walked in the door, so. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't, you still always have to be, be watching out, no matter what you're doing as far as announcing yourself. How many others in this room have come across an awkward situation when you step out to the property? What'd you come across? Well, I actually had an agent, but they had just listed the property. They put a sign up, and I called, they said, they told me they were going to list it, so I talked to them, I showed it. They gave me the wrong address, and the door was locked. I went in this house. I'm showing this lady's house. She's in the bedroom. She comes walking down the hallway. I'm like, hi! And I yell, real estate, when I go in. I open the door and say, real estate. She comes and scares the crap out of me. She screams. I scream. The client screams. I stand in there, and I go, I, did she not let you know we're showing your house? She's my house is for sale. I go, Oh my God! You know, <laughs> he could have shot me. It was the house next door. She oh, gave me the wrong address. So she could have shot me. That was my thought. You know, I mean, it's not even now. I think, but it doesn't because she could have shot me in the time. This is five to ten years ago. I mean, a little different time frames, you know, fifteen years ago maybe, and stuff. But and then I had to not tell the person we're coming. It was evening time. And then we go in and I yell real estate, she's in the bathroom doesn't hear us, and then she comes out and like, nobody told me you're coming, you know, and she could shoot you too. I mean, it's this day and age, definitely. More so than, I think, more so since I was 15 or 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. you know, I think so, so too, yeah. yeah. So it's real important, I think, to make sure you set those appointments and let people know <laughs> you're coming. <laughs> because it can be a bad and they even make sure you're setting them for other filters too. Right, right. That's uh, right. I've if, had if someone just told like me. you, or right. you know, you walk in. And, oh, nobody ever told me. So. Well, I was excited to show her house, and she's just looking at me like. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody else had anything strange they come across? Just an actual house here in the Osho. I mean, and it was like a house, and he would open the door and call it out.
got into place, did floor closing, we went to go take the lockbox off and you know, inside the house was dead. The seller would have found out that everybody would have been in a lot of trouble. But, yeah, he, uh, he had a window that he was replacing, so he just cut it out. And, um, and he thought, I'm going to get ready to close, it's no big deal. He was a master presence. Yeah, he was a master presence. Um, have an excuse ready if you feel uncomfortable. If something, if something is, is going wrong on a showing, um, it, I've never had to use it, but what I always say is I am having intestinal problems and I need to leave. So I'm sorry. I'm going to have to reschedule this sometime when I can bring Justin along because he can fill a man with the parents. So. Anyway, just have just have something in mind if, if people are making you feel uncomfortable. Um, arrive early, if at all possible. I try to get there 15 minutes early on showing. She can't always do that. I usually try to get there early and just get an idea for what the property looks like. Um, if you have time, you can let the people know that you're there and take a walk around the house. Um, I would let people know that you're there before you walk around the house though. My wife's an appraiser and a lot of times she does her outside pictures when she first gets there um, and then people come to the door and say, what are you doing in my yard? It's like, well, I'm your appraiser. Oh, okay, well that makes sense now, but knock on the door, tell them who you are. I'm here, I'm gonna walk around real quick. Do not get in. Think about all the different situations you can be in where you are in a place where you cannot get out, where it's easy for somebody to form you. That involves pulling into a property. If you pull in, you want to make sure you park in a place, whether it's on the road or anywhere else, even maybe the next house over, so you can pull out easily so you don't get your vehicle pinned in. Let your customers go into the room and the house before you. Do not go into a room before your clients. You never know what they're going to do behind you. It's better to be courteous and say after you than let them move on in first so you, you keep yourself safe. That is difficult for ladies. Yes. Uh, my wife has said <clears throat> over and over that she, she said this, where, oh, please go ahead. No, I'm a gentleman. You will go for it. Well, this is, a, this is an issue with, uh, with safety. We would like you to go ahead and go first. So it's, this is a safe showing practice. This is the way we do things. So. Go ahead, go in front of me, and it's not going to hurt my feelings. So. Absolutely. Last thing is wear a name tag or your company logo. Um, again, just, well, of course. <laughs> I don't have so, but he does. It's, you know, I, I know it's not really super official stuff like a badge or anything, but this lets people know that you're, uh, you're an agent, you're here to show their house, you're, you're not here to do anybody any harm. You can't have fancy flashing hats. <laughs> 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 Not to call you out, but it is still the problem. <laughs> uh, let's see. What else did I have to say? A um, couple of other quick things about safe showing. Um, then we'll talk about doubt. Um, uh, be cautious of pull down attic ladders. When you're showing a property, when your customers are going up, um, they are rated between two and 400 pounds. But check that because like I'm 235 and they kind of buckle under my weight when I go up them sometimes. I've also had customers that there's no way they should be going up an attic, uh, an attic ladder. And they're, I'm gonna go up there. It's like, okay, but you know, I, you, you've gotta be careful doing this stuff. And, and agents specifically, I think, need to be very cautious to it. Um, there's a story of an appraiser who almost died falling off an attic ladder uh, doing an attic inspection. She's just up, they gotta do a head and shoulders inspection, take a couple of pictures. Uh, she fell off and laid there. It was a vacant house and she laid there and bled almost to death. Yeah, finally woke up enough to call the, the paramedics um, there was another story in the appraiser circle about a lady falling off the ladder and the homeowner opening the garage door, looking out there and seeing that, and then shutting the door real fast and doing nothing. I don't know if she thought that she wouldn't be taking on liability if she didn't help her, but I mean, that's what happened. So, you know, relying on, relying on your customers.
customers to save you is is probably not not advisable. So. All right, puppies. Well, dogs. All right. So, <laughs> I am a big dog lover. This is this is Jake's dog. Jake works in our office too. This is Gus. Okay, next slide. Let's see. That's Gus. <laughs> that's my dog. Anyway, I love dogs. Okay, this is my daughter's dog. Keep doing that's my daughter's other dog. Let's see. This is Justin's dog, yeah. Maximus. Um, that's Maximus again. These are my dogs, like hey, Zach and like Lois. Lois. Anyway, Zach is a Minpin Chihuahua mix. Uh, he's got a taste for venison. <laughs> <laughs> so, and everybody likes to fight too. So there's him. This is Lois. Lois is an Anatolian Shepherd. She weighs about 140 pounds or so. And Sweetest dog she is a sweet baby. Next slide. See, there's oh, so cool. um, anyway, so Lois. <laughs> Lois, I took to St. Louis, um, took her out of, I, away from our farm, basically. Oh, that one. <laughs> there you go. For, uh, I took her out for uh, Christmas to my folks' house. And, of course, everybody loves her. I'm walking the two dogs, and everybody comes up and pets and pets. My dad's neighbors come outside, and there's two little girls, and they stood there like this. And my dog was across the street almost, and I said, are you afraid of dogs? And they said, yes, yes, very much. And they were scared to death. And of course, Lois sees that, who is so super sweet, she would never do anything to anybody, but she starts to get a little weird, like, what's going on? There's something wrong. So, next slide. Point is, no, fat. This <laughs> is what most people think of when they think of dogs. This is what I think of. This is what Justin thinks of when he thinks of some cute little puppy. Next slide. This is what those little girls think of when they think of dogs. They think, oh man, I'm getting ready to get messed up. And they were scared to death of my dog. Next slide. Dogs can smell fear in people. And this is a big deal when you have a showing. If you have a little girl that gets scared, then you might have a dog react some way that you've never seen it react before. It may be super sweet all the time, but then all of a sudden, there's somebody in my house who's acting really weird. So their first idea is we're gonna try and protect our owners. So um, this is very important, I believe, for listing agents. Um, I think listing agents need to be informing their sellers that any kind of dog aggression, it's not only going to kill your sale, but it's going to open you up for liability um, where you could get sued, um, your homeowner's insurance could get involved, they could investigate everything. Uh, there's just a lot that can go wrong. So, aggressive dogs need to be removed or restrained, but I really think aggressive dogs, if you have a dog that's mean, bites, is a guard dog, is snarling mean, get it off the property before you show. Um, I had a listing, my wife and I did, this guy had a pit bull that had a head about this big, and he would hold it like this, and this thing would snarl and try and get away, and you just knew if that dog got loose, it was going to kill you and anybody else there. So, no big deal, I'll just hang on to the dog. Well, people were running away like crazy. Then, next time, okay, I'll just, I'll just put him in this closet over here. Then, the realtor calls me. There is a snarling dog that sounds like they're going to come through this door here, and these people are scared to death. So, you know, maybe we just won't look at this house. Okay, fine. So, Anyway, it took way longer to sell this house because of this dog. Finally, we were able to <coughs> get it through his head. You need to take your dog away. Yes? It's not always the aggressive dogs that need to be removed. The beautiful white dog on my billboard, mm -hmm. she was my sidekick. She, um, she was my showing dog. She rode with me everywhere. She was uh, the sweetest dog you ever got to know that white German Shepherd. She was a love. But if you 
come to my house. She wasn't going to let you in until I told her you were okay. She let you to death until I told her you were okay. But, you know, so even the, even nice dogs, when the owners there are not quite the same when the owner's not there, my best friend, they'd come in the house and we visited and, and everything, and she'd been driving one of our vehicles. And I said, you know, you could put her under the carport. She went outside, the dog went with her, and then the dog would let her back in the house, even though she had already been there. And she knew her, you know, she still was like, no, no, not until mom says it's okay. So even even nice dogs are, uh, are not always the same when the owner's not there. That's exactly right. Any animal can be territorial. Any animal can get aggressive if they feel like their areas are being threatened. Speaking of that, um, I spoke with Kathy Harris here uh, two days ago about her dog attack. She is a Cassville agent. She's got an office in Cassville, one in Shell Knob, one uh, down in Arkansas, I believe, Pea Ridge. So uh, anyway, she's been doing this for a little while. She was doing a video showing um, of a property uh, and was going over to the crawl space and heard puppies in the crawl space. And that's where they were. And they were, it was a Pyrenees mix. Um, anyway, it came up behind her and attacked her, um, tore like a grapefruit-sized chunk out of her thigh, um, bit her, uh, she had severe shin and leg trauma. Anyway, she had 90 days of in-home health, wound care, um, and was out of work. And when I talked to her, I said, is there anything you can recommend? And she said, this is a listing agent deal. This, these, the listing agent should have had, you know, have, have made me aware that this dog was here. Um, and it was, uh, turns out these people were Amish, and Amish people believe that insurance is kind of like gambling, so they didn't have homeowner's insurance. So she was basically stuck taking care of a lot of this herself. Um, the other thing, the main thing Kathy wanted me to point out to everyone is it wouldn't have mattered if she would have had a gun, knife, mace, anything. She said this dog was on her so fast, came up from behind her, and she said it was too quick, I couldn't do anything. You need to need to inform people that if they've got big dogs, you need to you need to keep everybody safe who's coming through your house. This is just like if you were gonna have a cocktail party, you wouldn't have this big mean dog that's gonna bite people and run everybody off. Well that's the way you need to think about your showings is you're having strangers into your house. How did she yes, finally get away and get help? She fought it off and the, the sellers helped fight it off too. Oh, they, were, they were there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she, luckily mm -hmm. she wasn't by herself. She yeah. said she thought that it would have been, that she would have, uh, if it would have been somebody not quite as strong as her, she thinks they would have died. She brought up a couple of uh, couple of her agents and she said they would have they would have it is just really scary and sad. She put a picture of her wound on Facebook and they censored it. It was, I mean, it was really, really bad. So, yeah. um, which I showed that everybody's eating lunch. So, anyway, <laughs> don't have that. So, um, let's see. Something police officers do if they, let's see, go to the next slide, probably. Well, here, let's talk about that. You can carry dog treats. Um, that's something that I do. I don't have any on me right now, but usually when I go to showings, I always have uh, a baggie full of dog treats in my pocket. And if they come at you, here you go. And that, most of the time, they'll stop dogs. Uh, I've, had, I've had people call me and say they couldn't get into a house. And, and you come over, and all I do is give the dog snacks, and they go right in. So um, that is a good idea. It also, people love when you give the dogs treats. I mean, they just, oh, you brought treats for my dog? You must be a great guy. You know? <laughs> so, anyway, it never hurts to have dog treats. Uh, when you pull up to a, to a showing and you're unfamiliar with it, um, this is my cop buddy told me this stuff. These are things that, that the police do when they pull up. They look for signs of the dog. Is there a dog bowl? Is there a dog house? Are there tie outs, runs in the yard, stuff like that? Things that are showing you that there's probably a dog here. And 
if there is, if they see something like that and they get worried that they're getting ready to get mauled the minute they get out of the car, they will open their door and shut it to stay right in the car because it sounds like you get out. And then here come the dogs. They just hear that car door and here they come running. So think about that. If you're nervous about getting out of the car, just open that door and shut it and then just wait and see who comes running. It never hurts to be safe. Right. You never do too much. And then farm animals. Um, a lot of us show farms. Um, a lot of people don't think about bulls at all until there's one walking up to your truck while you're standing there with your customer. So kind of keep an eye out. I've had that happen once or twice where all of a sudden a, you know, some cows wander in over here. Well, then there's a great big bull that wanders in and starts getting closer and then starts getting a little aggressive. So just, just things to think about. Um, chickens, my buddy was telling me he, chicken is the only animal that's ever backed him into his car. <laughs> just came up and started destroying his legs until, uh, until he just got back in his car. And this is the cops. He and his buddy was just making fun of him. Like, oh yeah, good. You're real tough, aren't you? But anyway, yeah, that's, that's important. Um, next slide. You open a gate, make sure you close it. If you let out livestock, you're going to be sorry that you did. It's going to be a bad day for you. So, right. they like that <laughs> gate <laughs> there. We have an experience with geese, with geese, and they're mean. They can be mean. And I was showing one of the, another agent, we've been an agent for a long time, Doris Bishop. I don't know if you've been I know the name. Doris, she passed away. Anyway, we were showing this up 20 years ago when the geese kept coming up and, and they were coming at us like, choo 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 at us. And, but, and I was like jumping at it, running over here, and then finally got a hold of her, show it to kind of her jacket deal right here on her arm, and she's just carrying along, showing the property. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, no, we do, you know. <laughs> it was like, but they, could, they were kind of vicious, you know, but it didn't get crazy on us, but it was bad enough that I could. something to eat that he shouldn't and then I'm not going to be able to pay attention to what I'm doing because well, I'm she looking doesn't at this get guy. Out of the Just people see her and they're aware she's there. Exactly. Well, and that's, I've had a few people say that, that I leave my dog in, in the vehicle and that's fine. Yeah. One time I did take her out. I was out in the country alone and uh, very secluded and I got there and it was an old derelict uh, property and when I got there it was all standing open. And I was, I'm like, hmm. So I, I, 
I did get her off that day. She was on a leash, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I took her inside to look before I ran her because I was, uh, I got a hold of the agent and I said I found the property because it was open. He said, oh, I left it that way. He said to air it out. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that when I scheduled my show? It scared me. <laughs> well, and, and, and normally she just sort of stayed in the car. <laughs> If people just saw her there and made them aware she was there. Well, and, and Leanne had a, had a similar incident uh, just about a week ago um, with one of my listings, and she went there, and the door was open, and it was the seller had been removing stuff that weekend, and she said, I thought about it, that maybe I should call Bill and, or someone and say, hey, I'm going to call you back in five minutes, but she didn't, and, and then on the way back, she was like, you know, I could have called you and said, this door is open, so if I don't call you back in five minutes, you know, come out here, so I'm the cavalry or whatever. But she didn't, and then she just thought, you know, why did I do that? That's just, oh, there's probably nothing. Yeah, there's probably not. Yeah, but it would have taken two seconds to just say, hey, I'm getting ready to go into a house that was standing open, and I'm just going to take a quick look. You know, everything should be fine. But we'll see. All right, we better move on. All right, I'm going to talk quickly about safety apps. Um, <clears throat> I have limited knowledge of safety apps. Find my iPhone is the one my wife and I use. If you've got an iPhone, you need to set those up with your loved ones. You'll know where they're. Where you, you'll know where they are. If they, if you need to basically ping them, you can do that, and it will show you where they are. That's only for iPhone users. Um, be safe. Um, we talked about that a little bit in, in uh, CE. That actually you can set up. It's kind of similar. It will show you actually where people are on a map. Um, you can also do things like a fake phone call. If you feel uncomfortable, you can hit a button and then your phone, you'll say, oh, my phone's ringing. i got to take this. Um, it'll show you, um, oh, a few other things. Um, you can set appointments. It'll, you can say, okay, I'm going to go to 215 Spring Street, and then when it gets there, it'll ping, let people at your office know, hey, they made it, they're safe, hey, they left there, things like that. Like I said, I've got limited knowledge on this because basically we tell each other what we're doing, where we're going. It's a real low-tech kind of way, and it works. But that is something that's um, uh, uh, an app that can be used if you don't have that network. Um, Life 360, that is basically something that is very similar to I find my iPhone, but it's a little more detailed. It's going to show you where your loved ones are, where your colleagues are. If they're traveling in a car, it'll show you how fast they're traveling, where they're going, things like that. Um, a lot of uh, parents and teenagers like it on their, on their phones because it'll show how, how high of a rate of speed of kids are traveling in their cars. So it's a good way to bust kids from speeding. Um, one other thing I just wanted to mention, eHerb. Those are really for, they were designed for hikers and um, ocean going vessels and stuff like that. Um, it's an emergency position indicating radio beacon. Basically this works on satellite technology and what would happen is if you get in a situation where you don't have a cell, cell phone signal and you're stuck, you hit your EPIRB button and it sends a signal and shows your location. It doesn't tell them anything else. It just says, hey, somebody, somebody hit this and somebody needs help here. So that's what that is. This is the app I've been using a lot lately. This is called Onyx Hunt. And I don't know, some, some of you guys might have it already. Um, this is... $20 a year for one state or $100 a year for all 50 states. And what it shows you is property lines. You, know, you can see when I did this, I was in my office and you can see what the property lines are around my office. So this <clears throat> app was created to keep hunters from getting shot from getting on other people's land. It's basically what it was made for. But it is an excellent tool for a real estate agent. Um, it's not a survey, but it will get you real, real close to where your property lines are. It'll give you a pretty good idea to where if you see a fence over there, you can know if that's on your property or not. All right. 
Anybody got any questions about safety apps at all? I know we're kind of flying through stuff. We had a lot to cover today. We're going to do a little bit of talking about firearms just quickly. Um, don't know how many of you guys carry firearms, but I know there's quite a few realtors out there that do. Um, so we just kind of wanted to go over some real basic uh, firearm safety and also talk about a few different resources that are out there. Um, let's see. So when you pick up a gun, be it your gun, be it anybody else's gun, the first thing, the most important rule of gun safety is to point the muzzle in a safe direction. No matter if the gun's loaded, unloaded, if you checked it, if you haven't, always, always point the muzzle in a safe direction. You're always going to keep your finger outside the trigger guard until you're ready to shoot. Um, you're also going to keep your safety on. Then, at that point in time, you will check the chamber and you'll check the magazine to see if the gun is loaded. Okay, anybody got anything to expand on that, add to it? Questions, comments? I know I'm going fast. I'm trying to get everybody done and going. Put it in. Go ahead. Every state, no matter where you're at, every state offers a hunter's education course. It teaches you the basics of how to handle a weapon, what to know about handling a weapon, and what to know about the environments you're in. Most states offer them for free or for a small fee. They're absolutely worth every bit of taking them, no matter what your age is, to get in there and take the hunter's ed course. Really valuable knowledge. Um, real quick about conceal and carry. Um, if you in the state of Missouri, if you want to carry a gun, you can carry a gun. You don't have to have your conceal and carry permit. You don't have to, basically, you can just start carrying a gun and concealing it. I would highly recommend um, anyone who is going to carry a gun, concealed or otherwise, I would recommend you take a conceal and carry class. Um, my buddy talkies, and he talks, and it, basically, he's giving us a real, real easy breakdown of what they teach. Um, number one is legal consequences. You shoot somebody, what's going to happen legally to you? Are you going to have a felony? Are you going to be, you know, right? what's going to happen? Are you just going to walk away from the whole thing or are you going to go to prison for the rest of your life? That's things that they're going to teach you. When it's okay, when it's not, basically what you can do. Number two is going to be the emotional consequences of taking someone's life, which can really basically end your career. If you're not prepared for what's going to happen and you have to shoot somebody, you may not be prepared for that and you might snap or you might not be able to carry on doing your, your daily job anymore. You might not be able to carry a gun anymore. You just It's hard to say. Three is practical consequences. What is going to happen after you shoot somebody? Specifically, you will be placed in cuffs. You will go to jail probably at least for the night, maybe for even longer. But you have to be prepared for that because a lot of people think, oh, no, I'm just standing my ground. And, you know, you don't have to take me in and stuff like that. No, that's not the way it works. If you shoot somebody nine times out of ten, they're going to take you to jail and just figure out what's going on. So... You have to be ready for that. Bye. A couple comments. Yes, sir. Uh, you want to know what's beyond your target and what's between you and your target. And you got to be aware also that uh, bullets go through walls. Yes, yes they do. Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't think about, I've heard so many people say, oh, this is just a 22, no big deal. 22 is built a mile. I mean, it's, that's a that's a lot of range there, you know, and I know it's a little bullet, but, you know, oh, it's just like a BB gun. No, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. So, so if, you know, if I'm shooting at you, I, I want to know what's behind you and don't want to shoot somebody else besides you. If you're the first. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> how many else, how many other people feel like they want to shoot me? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> all right. Thank you. you always feel that way. <laughs> No, I, I think that's that's uh, that's very uh, very good advice. Know your target and what's beyond it, because you may not or you may not hit your target. So. Ties into being mindful of your surroundings. 
What do we got next? Let's see. Um, of course, at home, uh, keep your guns away from children. Keep them locked away. Um, check, double check your gun when you're getting ready to store it. Make sure it is empty. And you always want to store your weapons clean. If you handle
just driving too fast, just swerve off the road, and that could just stop me at what half the road we're on out here. Manage yourself and your space. Leave room for the unexpected. You don't know what's out there, plan for anything. Leave yourself an out. You want to expand on that? Uh, yeah, park on the road if you can. Um, back in your spaces if you can. Don't be someplace where somebody can just pull up in front of your car and then you can't leave yourself on foot. That's the main thing. That's the main thing. Watch out for other drivers and watch out for motorcycles specifically. They tend to be a lot, a lot smaller. They get in your blind spots. I know we've all seen them. We've all dealt with them. You just got to be mindful of the things that you don't see. They can still be there. Manage your stress. No matter what's going on, keep your composure. Maintain your calm. Control your environment. Pay attention and avoid distractions. You guys can see the picture there. This gentleman's in a parking lot in an apartment complex. He's driving through. He doesn't see the other individual heading forward because he's busy on his phone. That's, that's a no-go. That's how somebody has a really bad day real fast. <coughs> Plan ahead and expect potential delays. Plan for yourself to have extra time. We always led by the example with the military that if you're 15 minutes early, you're already five minutes late. Give yourself plenty of time, and if you arrive early, it's always better than being late. Let's see. Map out your destination before you head out, or destinations. If you had, especially if you're showing five properties, it's one of those things. It's really going to help to know where you're going and what you should do first, second, third, fourth. Because you otherwise you're going to be jogging all over the place. Um, know that before you leave, you give yourself plenty of time. It's important to take care of your vehicle. Um, it's not time to change the oil when the little light goes on, like my daughter thought. Um, you know, <laughs> you want to keep your windshield clean so you can see out of it. That's very important. A lot of people don't even think about that. Um, anyway, uh, you want to keep your tires inflated. They're just basic vehicle maintenance that when you're driving all the time like we do, it's really important. And if you neglect something for two, three weeks, a month, it could turn into a real problem when you're putting 100, 200 miles a day on your vehicle. So just think about that. Have a road safety kit. You should always think to keep something in your vehicle, something that's got bandages, a cold weather blanket or a thermal blanket possibility of having rations or an MRE available should you get stuck somewhere, safety triangles, a flare, and an EPIRB. If you have the ability to get an EPIRB or download the app on your phone, again, those are hooked to satellites. They can be something that can really save your life in any adverse environment. <coughs> road flares are not only good for road flares, they're also good for starting a fire in an emergency situation. So remember that if you got a road flare, you can start a fire sometimes even with wet wood if you're getting ready to freeze. So. And salt, or like keep a little thing of salt in your vehicle. Whether you can get stuck into a place where you have to dig yourself out, salt will help you gain traction and get out of some places when you get stuck. Speaking of getting stuck, don't do it. If you're getting ready to drive someplace and you think, hey, I'm going to get stuck there, you're probably right. I know because I've done it lots of times, and so has my wife. I also submerged her car one time down in Powell. Um, accidentally, but uh, <laughs> thinking that I could get through there without getting stuck, and I'll probably get through there, and I did. And anyway, I had to call my customers to come tell me out. So, and go figure, they didn't buy the house. So that about <laughs> that about figures. Um, other thing is, people can see you when you're driving. So uh, my friend Brian was telling me the other day that one of his coworkers said you had road rage so bad the other day and what was wrong with you, and it turned out he was singing, but um, <laughs> he said they could see me through the window. <laughs> so anyway, just, just remember that, just remember that, yeah. I had an experience with my daughter driving our car that had a company on it. Uh-huh. And I got a call, and I was, yeah, it was busy with the call, so I texted her back, I'm like, back, and this person texted me back and said, I am so mad, and I'm like, And she said, you know, whoever was driving your car was wasn't paying any attention and just 
about ran down the road and I laid on the corn and they weren't paying attention. They just, then they sped off and I was about ready to follow them and then I decided I should do it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My daughter's just driving the car and, and I, you know, of course I apologized to all of this. I just said, I, I really appreciate you calling. I'll be definitely taking care of this and I'll be talking to her. But then it was like, think about that when you've got your company name on your car, who you're going to let drive it. Yeah, of course I didn't know that you talked to my daughter. I bet she did, yeah. You remember how many people were getting the name off? Well, and like with me, I don't have my name on the side of my truck, but it doesn't matter because everybody knows. I've been driving the same truck for 12 years and everybody knows that bill, and yeah, they know. Yeah. So it's one of those things. You live in a small town, people are going to know this stuff. So. What else do we have? Let's see, Justin's got some. I wanted to throw this in there, just double tap this real quick, about statistics. And according to the state of Missouri, for the first time since 2006, Missouri's traffic fatalities last year surpassed 1,000. And as you can go through this and quickly scan it, you can see that according to preliminary data, or preliminary data, 1,004 were killed in traffic accidents and nearly 3% increased from the previous year marking the second straight year of growing fatality totals for after nearly a decade. They state that it's unacceptable. The director goes on but what I really wanted to point out was the lack of seatbelt use continues to be a denominating factor. Approximately two-thirds of vehicle occupants were killed by not wearing seatbelts. It also shows that data was people were using cell phones when they were involved in more than 2,200 crashes in Missouri in 2021. Just from simple things like texting or taking a phone call and not having to lose it, just looking down at your phone. That's 2,200 times somebody could have lost a life by a simple thing like looking at a phone. And although distracted drivers remain widely underreported, 40% of the fatal crashes in the year involve speeding or driving too fast for the conditions. Take your time, slow down, arrive alive. It's on every MoDoc thing you can find on every highway. They have this posted everywhere on their commercials. Just take your time, slow down. If you have to take a phone call or have to take a text, even more importantly, pull over. It's, it doesn't take any time to pull over. You can just you just get out of the way real quick and then you are, you're out of the way. You're not going to hurt yourself. You're not going to hurt anybody else. So. All right. Are there Anybody any questions? have any questions about anything? Any comments? Lou Ann? Uh, this is something that I used to do. Uh, I was working at an office in Carthage, and we had farm businesses in a large area. Land and crane, you know, land and Anyway, a lot of times it wasn't convenient for customers to come to the office, and they would meet at the property. Well, rather than meet at the property, I would say, well, why don't we meet there at that Walmart parking lot that's near the property? That way it gave me a chance to have my feelings about the person that was in that car. And a lot of times it was a man alone. Uh, and you said six. My plan was, and I never had to do it, but when I would meet them and we would visit a little bit, uh, if I would have been sick if I had that feeling and I was to say, you know, we're not going to be able to look today, but we'll have to come another time. But I always did that because I didn't want to go to that farm and show some guy show up that I've never seen in my life. So I always met on, and usually a Walmart or some convenience store or something. To remember that, don't meet them if you've never met them at a farm. I love that idea. That's a fantastic point. Gas stations almost always have cameras now. Most grocery stores have parking lot surveillance systems. Any public place you can find where there's a chance that your interaction has been recorded should something go wrong, and it's, it's far too easy. That's a fantastic idea. I'm glad you mentioned it. Thank you for that. Another thing you can do is a lot of people feel like they have to explain everything to a customer or a client. You know, I've got to go because I've got to go do this. You can look at your cell phone and say, I've got, I've got something I've got to take care of. So, and it's, I don't have to explain to you what I'm doing. It's like, this is very important. I need to go do this right now. So we're going to have to redo it or, or reschedule this for later. 
and I think that's fine. I, I think um, I think when agents have been doing this for a little while, they get a little bit more comfortable with doing that. Newer agents are, oh no, I need to I need to be right there no matter what because I don't want to lose this person. Well, yeah, the the, the people who are got to have everything right now, and you got to be here, and I'm not qualified, and I'm not giving you my name. They're not serious anyway. <laughs> so it's one of those things. Yeah. The social media apps and all the things that can meet people on anymore makes it so much harder. Because I mean, I'm like 26 years into this, you know. From the beginning, I'm waiting to have a computer in the lab. You know, we've met people. They come to where you're on. They were always in your car, you know. And now I don't know the last time I had them in my car, you know, actually going once they're older and want to get in my car. But I am. Um, <clears throat> I would typically uh, tell people to come to the office and meet, and we try to do that now with these. Messenger and all this stuff, and I had a people I'd never even met, and she kept messaging about places wanting to look this out, gonna come, and I kept asking vague questions, to not just be point blank, you know, because I'm trying to. I'm about the last five years trying to learn the social media world, you know, so I'm asking questions, and finally she says, you know, if you don't want to work with me, you don't have to meet us there and show the property. So because I was trying to vaguely, you know, and stuff. So finally, the message says, you know, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you look like. I know nothing about you. I just want to know who I'm meeting because I'm meeting you in a country property. Could you please give me this information? Or could I ask them to call me like two or three times? Because I'd rather have a conversation the first time instead of just meeting them after that. And it was like the next day. She, it ended up being a lady, which I didn't know. It could have been a man. So finally, messaged me saying, you know, I just read your message and realized, you know, I was kind of rude to you. So I thought maybe I could call you on my way to town and we could set up to find it on dock. I don't have phone service where I'm at at my house. Right. That's harder for me to be able to communicate. So I was like, okay, that's great. So she did call me and it was a lady and it all worked out fine. But the whole time, you know, I thought, well, I've lost clients because of it. Social media sucks. You know, this is one who's learning it, you know, trying to get people because they don't want to come to your office. They don't want to come Well, and part of my, part of my experience is some of the people who are going to get you want me to, you're not really serious, and you know, it's one of those things yeah. that are but serious, they'll people, say. Yeah. But are people not? Because these people really were. Yeah. And they just are used to that with people anymore. It's just, the younger just generation. Me, but I know it's going on. So. Yeah. But yeah, I, get, I totally get that. I yeah. that so. yeah. It's just interesting nowadays. Interesting. interesting is one word for it, yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you.